All right, super quick, I'm gonna show you how we textured this little Spitfire. We made it in the last couple of videos. So first things first, we have our finished model over here. We're gonna switch over to the shading workspace. Now we're gonna add a new material and we're gonna name this material UV test because first we have to test our UVs and unwrap this model, okay? We're gonna add an image texture node. We're gonna create a new image. We're gonna name that UV test, all right? 1024 is fine. And we're gonna set the type to your UV grid or the color grid or whatever. We're gonna plug that into base color. Now you can see it's a complete mess because the model's not UV unwrapped yet. So we're going to take our time to UV unwrap it. I'm not going to show you this boring stuff, all right? I already have some tutorials on how to do that. Uh, but we're going to UV unwrap the model. And once we do that, you can see we have some nice UVs. And now we can start texturing. So we're going to delete these couple of nodes that we uh, had with the color grid. And we're going to add a noise texture node, okay? We're going to plug that into the base color of the principal node. And in between that, we're going to plug in a color ramp node. We're going to set the gradient type to constant, just so we have a sharp cut between the, uh, between the colors. And we're going to use two colors now just to define the pattern. Now we're going to add a node wrangler to a noise texture node just so we have a bit more control over the uh, noise texture and over the pattern. We're going to play around with the scale. We're going to set the texture coordinate to object. So once we have the right pattern, we're going to go ahead and set the colors. Okay, we're going to have this light blue kind of gray color and we're also going to have a sort of dark military green kind of color on the other side. And we're just going to set those in the color ramp node. And once we have the right colors, we're going to add another image texture node. We're going to create a new texture there. Okay. The 2048 is going to be the resolution for this one. We're going to name that baked texture and we're going to set the type to blank. Okay, so now we're going to switch to cycles. We're going to go down here in the render properties. We're going to find the bake menu. We're going to set the type to diffuse. We're going to uncheck direct and indirect. So we only have color checked and we're going to click on bake. So now we're going to bake this image onto this new image texture node into the new image that we just generated. Okay, so after a couple minutes, our texture is going to be perfectly baked onto the UVs and the image editor. Okay, we can see that on the side over here. So we're going to delete all these old nodes and we're just going to use uh, this image texture that we just baked and we're going to plug that in the base color of the principal node and now our texture is perfectly projected on the model, okay? Now we're going to create a new material for the windows and for the glass, okay? I'm just going to use a glossy material. I'm not going to make it transparent because I didn't actually make an inside of the cockpit. But we're going to assign that material to all these window panels that we have uh, on, the, on the airplane on the cockpit over here. We're going to create a new material there. We're going to set the color to something like a dark blue color. And we're going to increase the metallic all the way up because that makes it look pretty good. Okay. And also, of course, we're going to have to apply that to the front window. So now we have a finished window texture. We're also going to texture the, the same material. We're going to put it on this little uh, mirror that we have on top there. And now we're going to jump into Google. We're going to type in PaintNet. We're going to go click on download. We're going to download that program. And when we open up the program, we're going to create a new image with Control N. We're going to set the resolution to 1024 by 1024. We're going to click OK. Now we're going to delete everything with Control A and Delete. And we're going to use a circle tool to create some nice patterns that we're going to need on the wings of our airplane. Okay, so we're going to set the colors. We're going to set the outline to something like blue. We're going to set a very fat outline. And the middle color is going to be something like a pale red kind of color. And then we're going to create that shape with a transparent background. We're going to save it and we're going to load it into our texture painting workspace. Okay, so now we can just load up that image as a texture on the side. And by default, if we try to paint that over the airplane, it just kind of tiles. It just kind of makes it look ridiculous. All right, so we don't want that. We're going to go down here into mapping in this uh, texture properties menu and we're going to set that to clip and not repeat. On the left side of the screen, we have to go down to the texture menu and we have to set the mapping to stencil. And then we get the stencil on our screen and we can just paint over it. All right. So in 3D view, we're going to adjust this stencil and we're going to go to top view and we're going to just paint over that and get the right to uh, get the right shape on the side of the wing. And of course, we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Next, we need to create this kind of yellow tape that you can see in this reference image over here. So we're going to select, we're going to create a new material and assign that yellow material to these uh, faces that we have in the front of the wings. And we're also going to model out something. We're going to make some bevels so that we can make this little red tape that uh, goes across those uh, two yellow lines. Okay, so new material for that red material. And we're going to assign that right there. Okay, now next we have to texture paint these black lines that we can see on the wings for that. We're just going to use a line brush uh, in texture painting. Okay, and we're just going to paint some black lines uh, over on the sides of these wings, but we're going to make sure not to get it over the uh, blue dots that we just texture painted before. So once we painted that on one side, I figured we're going to have to make it exactly the same on the other side. So I made a simple mesh to mark exactly where I made those lines. I mirrored that to the other wing so on the other side of the airplane. And then I just used the brush on those lines and I just made sure that the lines are in exactly the same place. Okay, same technique. So after making the lines, we had to, to, to texture paint some more decals and stuff like that. All right. Now we have a decal on the side of the airplane. I don't know what it says. I just wrote milk and I made some simple shapes there. Okay, I just made that in paint net. And we have to make sure that we have a transparent background here in this image, right? Now we're going to load that into Blender. And then we're going to go down here to the texture menu. And we have to click on image aspect to make sure that the dimensions are correct. Now, first, when we paint over it, it just gives us a black result. That's because our brush is black. So if we set our brush to a white color, it's going to give us the colors that we need for, our, uh, for our stencil, for our uh, brush. Okay, so we're going to paint that on both sides. And then we have to make this other decal on the other side or on the back of the airplane, right? We have some letters. 
we have uh, some colorful circles in between those letters and then we have some other numbers and letters in the back over here okay so we're going to say that again with a transparent background as a png before we do that we have to paint these white lines in the back on the tail of the airplane and then finally we can texture paint these uh, markings on the side of the airplane and these numbers and stuff like that okay i'm also going to create some simple materials for these other parts like these little exhaust pipes or the propellers in the front okay we're going to reduce the roughness on that and we have one last decal that we have to make which is this kind of flag or badge thing in the back here we're going to paint that on carefully on both sides of the tail of the airplane all right so we're just going to line it properly with the uh, one on the other side and we should be pretty much good to go all right i'll see you guys in the next one